Good evening, everyone. My name is David Shedd. I am the project manager for the project that's going to be presented this evening. I'm assigned to the roadway project management uh, section for MassDOT, which is located in 10 Park Plaza in Boston. I was directed by Chief Patricia Leavenworth to conduct tonight's hearing. Once the hearing is completed this evening, the attendance sheet will become part of the public record for the hearing. So if you would like your attendance at this hearing to be part of the public record, please sign in on the sign-in sheet located near the door. Handouts containing details regarding this project are also located next to the sign-in sheet. First, I'd like to introduce uh, the members of the hearing panel tonight. Uh, to my left is Tom Emmerich from uh, District 3. Next to Tom is Robin Giando from our right-of-way bureau. Joe Frawley is here um, from Traffic District 3. And on the end is uh, David Fraser from Arlington Typing and Mailing, uh, who will be making a verbatim transcript of tonight's hearing. Greg Russell is here from VHB. Um, he is uh, the town's consultant, and he will be presenting the project uh, to you in a few minutes. The notice of the hearing appeared in the Metro West Daily News on December 26, 2017 and January 2, 2017, and the Hopkinton Town Crier December 29, 2017 and January 6, 2018. A copy of the notice is included in the handout and will be attached to the final hearing uh, transcript. Uh, page four of the handout explains the purpose of the hearing which gives us an opportunity to make a formal presentation of the proposed project and at the same time allows us to record your input regarding this project. Construction funding for this project is currently identified as federal aid with the Federal Highway Administration funding 80 percent of the total construction cost. Uh, MassDOT funds the remaining 20 percent. Uh, this, pro this project is currently programmed in the FY uh, fiscal year 2019 um, program. The current total estimated uh, construction cost, engineer's estimate, is six million, approximately 6,400,000. This does not include any right-of-way acquisition costs. Right now, the design is expected to be completed late summer 2019. Construction is expected to be completed approximately 18 months after the start of construction. At this time, I would like to ask Robin Giando to explain our right-of-way procedure. Good evening. When the Commonwealth acting through its Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division indicated it would accept this $6,400,000 project for funding, your municipality accepted certain responsibilities. One of those responsibilities is acquiring all the necessary rights in private and public lands for the design, construction, and implementation of this project. My function is to review and recommend the procedures that your municipality will use in acquiring these rights. The procedures used must comply with both federal and state regulations. The current design plans indicate that no fee acquisitions and 53 permanent easements will be required and other areas may require temporary easements. Your municipality may acquire the needed rights through a combination of donations, eminent domain, <coughs> deed grants, permits, or rights of entry. Frequently, municipalities will appeal for donations to minimize the acquisition cost to your community. Donations and rights of entry are not required, however, and property owners are entitled to an appraisal and just compensation. This project cannot be advertised until the proposed right-of-way is secured and a right-of-way certificate is issued. Affected property owners' rights are protected under our Massachusetts General Laws, primarily Chapter 79, and because this project is receiving federal funds, the property owners' rights are further defined under Title III of the Real Property Acts of 1970, as amended. I will be happy to answer any general questions concerning right-of-way activities during the open forum, and I will be available after the hearing for any specific questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Uh, Greg Russell is going to describe uh, the town's project for you in detail. I ask that you hold your questions until after he presents, and then I'll open up the hearing for questions and comments. Thanks, Dave. Um, as I said, my name is Greg Russell. I'm 
with VHB. Um, we are the town's uh, design consultant for this project. Um, as Dave recent, just went over, uh, the project team, if you can see that, um, the proponent is the town of Hoppington. Um, we're the consulting. Mass DOT's highway division is responsible for the administering of the project. And then Federal Highway is, fund, is um, helping to fund the project. As I'm sure most of you have know, know through all the no meetings that we have had, um, this is the project area. The project runs from just west of the intersection of Wood Street and West Main Street to the intersection just east of Ash Street. And takes some, um, some work up, up along uh, Cedar and Grove Street along 85 to realign that section. Um, <coughs> so the, this is being funded through the TIP process, the Transportation Improvement Program for Mass DOT. And the way this is done, it, the TIP process establishes the design criteria for the uh, project and dictates how the framework for how we have to proceed through the design process. So we're going to get on to project goals for the the goals for this project were, it's primarily a safety project. Um, there were multiple road safety audits conducted uh, previously uh, by a previous consultant, uh, both at Wood Street and at the intersection of 85. And the goals primarily are to improve traffic operations and reduce congestion along the entire corridor, improve bicycle and pedestrian accommodations and safety, and enhance Main enhance the um, vision of Main Street. We'll go over, we'll go through the proposed improvements, but in general, uh, the main, one of the main improvements is the realignment of Grove Street to better align with Cedar Street on 85 um, to get rid of the offset intersection and, or improve the offset intersection and in turn improve get rid of the split phasing that is currently in place. There are modifications proposed at Marathon Way um, and to the Doughboy Island. And we are adding on-road and separated bike lanes uh, to the project as a whole. And this varies, and we'll go into this in more detail, varies between on-road bike lanes, sharrows, uh, separated, a uh, separated two-way bike lane or path on one side of the street and separated bike lanes on the on another one on each side of the street. We have new sidewalks on both sides of Main Street all throughout the project limits and then street lighting and street furniture will be added in, in throughout the project as well as landscaping. Um, <coughs> an existing conditions assessment has been done multiple times, um, they are, um, so we took traffic volumes throughout the project corridor. There was an assessment of existing bicycle accommodations, existing pedestrian amenities, um, existing parking spaces, and then a further review of what were considered key intersections by the town uh, throughout the corridor. So Route 135 in Main Street has a, uh, it's a high volume roadway. It's an arterial roadway. Has approximately 17,000 vehicles per day traveling east to west, which is for a two lane roadway is substantial. Um, as far as bicycle accommodations, the existing conditions, they're all, for the most part, share the road, share the road um, accommodations. There is a uh, existing trail towards the, uh, just east of Wood Street that is uh, unpaved. Pedestrian amenities, there are existing ADA ramps. Um, some of them are in compliance, some of them are not. Um, there are <coughs> the goal of this project is to carry the ADA compliance all throughout the entire limits of the project. Uh, parking. We've been working to um, 
with the town for several several years now, and um, working with the Chamber of Commerce to <coughs> best manage the uh, project as it relates to parking throughout the uh, corridor. And major intersections that were identified um, were Wood Street, Cedar and Grove, and Marathon Way, Ash Street, Hayden Road, the entire area. Other intersections were reviewed, uh, including Pleasant Street, and through, and counts were have been taken over the course of time at pretty much almost all the intersections along this corridor. So the goal to improve traffic operations for all users, this includes bicyclists, pedestrians, vehicles, and one of the things we want to do, we, we're designing a project for all users. So when it comes to bicyclists, we're talking recreational bicyclists, commuting bicyclists, kids. You know, we're trying to, we want to try and incorporate <laughs> all the users available possible. And bicycling is the fastest growing um, transportation mode. And so we're trying to adapt to that. As part of this um, project, we've um, incorporated separated bike lanes uh, for the majority of the project between Wood Street and 85. There'll be a two-way separated bike path, which will then convert to a to t two single uh, two one-way bike paths on either side of the road. Um, this is this is the cross section for where they have a on road on road where we have the five foot shoulders which w would accommodate bikes in the roadway and then new sidewalks on either side and eleven foot travel lanes and this would be in a section west of eighty five where you wouldn't have uh, existing parking. the area of Cedar Street to Hayden Row. We have one bike, uh, one directional bike lane on each side of the road. And the, the, width, the width, A, the existing width of the road varies significantly in that area. Uh, one of the goals we had was to try and smooth out the geometry while maintaining as much parking as possible and accommodating bicyclists. And this, this Shows a uh, two-way separated bike lane on the um, <coughs> on the right side of the page. There's a uh, it's a ten-foot lane, which is four-foot bike in e either direction, and then a two-foot buffer to the street. There's no parking in this side on the, that side of the roadway. Any parking would be on the opposite side, with it where we would have a two-foot shoulder and a five and a half-foot sidewalk or standard five and a half foot sidewalk that would vary depending on the what was at the back of the walk. Pedestrian amenities, <coughs> we'd like to carry a consistent five foot sidewalk throughout the entire project on both sides of the roadway. Um, install new ADA ramps at all, all intersections um, to facilitate crossings throughout the, throughout the um, project. At so at Wood Street, Route 85, and also at the fire station, there are proposed uh, signalized uh, pedestrian crossings that will be incorporated into the existing signals, and then they, there's a proposed fire um, hawk signal, pedestrian signal at the fire station. Um, we're also proposing there'll be some enhanced pedestrian crossings. Um, depending on the treatment, and that, those will be uh, resolved moving into final design. So at the moment, they're shown on the plans as your standard uh, ladder, cro ladder crosswalks, um, painted crosswalks, um, but that will be reevaluated moving forward. Parking, and we'll go into more depth on this moving forward, but there is, uh, there is gonna be a loss of parking um, I believe we counted 92 existing spaces 
along the uh, corridor. And there are existing spaces today that aren't necessarily consistent with the code, as in not they're within the inter within intersections or not not um, far enough away from a curb curb re, um, entrance into a side street. So those were not counted. In addition, we have added some additional parking spaces. Um, both the town has added it, and we've also added um, four spaces on Grove Street um, as part of this project. Additional parking, the town is working to add, off they're looking to add uh, additional offsite parking. So we're just gonna quickly, you can see this, go through, go through the improvements. These are the same um, slides as the boards that are out in the front and the role plan in the back. So if there, if there are specific questions that need, um, that you, anybody has questions about, we can look at it after the presentation, um, after comments have been made, and we'll be here afterwards to answer questions at, at the design if uh, anybody has anything. Um, so starting, uh, west of Wood Street, start off as the two-lane roadway with uh, shared, shared bike accommodations, sharrows. This widens out to five-foot shoulders and then proceeds to a, the separated two-way bike lane on the south side of uh, Main Street. Uh, we are adding a left turn lane, eastbound left turn lane onto from West Main Street onto Wood Street. And the intent for that is to, anyone um, trying to take a left blocks up the rest of the westbound traffic or eastbound traffic. So we're gonna try and move any of them out of the way so that traffic can continue to flow. Moving further along, this goes back through Pleasant Street and continue the two-way bike lane. <coughs> on the south side and the five foot sidewalk on the north side. Uh, the five, there's an additional five foot sidewalk in the back behind the uh, bike path. And we maintain two lanes, one lane in each direction and we're working primarily within the existing right of way. This section carries Let's go on to the fire, st fire station. And this is the new parking lot that was constructed by the town in front of the uh, police station. Again, again, in this, this area right here will be a signalized crosswalk um, to help facilitate movements between the north and south side. This will also serve as an emergency signal for the fire station. Here we have the Route 85, 135 intersection. Um, so this blue section over here shows, shows where the Grove, Grove Street is being shifted to the west to better align with Cedar Street to get, to get the uh, through movement to operate without the s need for a split phasing. We are also adding, and we can go further into this, but we're adding a second westbound through lane to better facilitate um, traffic flow in the westbound direction and in the intersection as a whole. Uh, just east, so just east of the existing gas station and Hopkinton Drug, we then convert to one, um, one-way bike lanes on each on each direction, or on each side of the road, and again, varying with sidewalks. <coughs> and this ends down at um, Ash Street, and this is showing the plan that was previously recommended by the Historic Commission 
and recommended by the Board of Selectmen. We understand that there's been a you know, desire to change, change what, is, uh, what is going on here. We are definitely looking into it. Uh, it's being considered, I know, by the town. And that will be incorporated. Any changes to this will be incorporated moving into the 75% design. So that what you, what you see here it can be, is not in etched in stone. <laughs> and I know the town has had a meeting last week to uh, try and resolve that. So we're going to take a closer look at the three main intersections. Main and Wood, Main and Cedar and Grove, and Main at Hayden Row. So, at Main and Wood, one of the the safety issue that was noted was that it averages five five crashes per year. Uh, this was based on a study done on crash data from 2009 to 2013. The the recommendation here was to propose a left turn lane from Main Street to Wood Street, as we discussed earlier a new pedestrian crosswalk across Wood Street, and then a bike, lane, bike lanes added west of the intersection, and then the separated two-way bike lane to the east. This is just a close-up view of the uh, screenshot from before. Um, I know this came up previously. We will be maintaining the uh, pavement markings to prevent the um, blocking of Reserve Street that was um, that are there today Main Street and Cedar and Grove it's a, as we noted it's an offset intersection it was averaging over 10 crashes per year over that same five year stretch and the goal here is to realign was to realign the intersection provide two through lanes westbound and then integrate the the bike crossings with the traffic signals provide the um, protected pedestrian phasing as well. So here we have Grove Street, Cedar Street. Here are the um, additional parking spaces that were proposed that are being proposed as part of this job. You have a left turn lane and two through lanes westbound. And then a left turn lane and a through lane, right, uh, eastbound. At this location, we here's the the two-way bike lane. It transitions, and the way it transitions is through a two-stage left turn lane. This is still um, being or a two-stage uh, left turn for the bikes. In which case, bikes would travel here with the through traffic and then cross with the through traffic on 85. And Main and Hayden Row, we're proposing to install a flashing beacon at Main and Hayden Row. And then again, as part of the original, as part of the design that was submitted, we're proposing to extend the common uh, to incorporate the Doughboy Island and to provide some additional parking both along Ash Street and Main Street. Uh, as we said, this is what was in the plans now. This is what was submitted uh, based on previous recommendations. This is going to be updated as part of the 75% design. And just just to give uh, an idea of what kind of a idea of what these look like today versus the future, uh, we have the CVS. Uh, so we have Grove Street over here and Main Street. This would be the intent of the of the improvements. You have the two lane, the two way bike lane here, and the green represents the bike path or the uh, path that bikes would take to access that path. And then coming in the opposite direction, you have the two-way bike path approaching the intersection um, and the sidewalk here. Your left turn lane and your through lane. Looking down from, or north from Grove Street. <coughs> uh, 
This is the new layout of the uh, CVS parking lot. We have the left turn lane through right turn lane. And you can see how the, the bikes would travel. Um, so if you're heading westbound, you would travel on this green stage here. And then when the light turns green for on 85, you would cross and continue on in the bike path. This is the comment as it exists today. This is what was proposed as part of the original 25% design based on recommendations. So moving on, that's just a overview of the project, project limits. Moving on, we have a, um, the original, the last design was submitted in June 2017 and we've been working towards this date since then. Um, today we're at the design public hearing. Final engineering is expected to occur over the remainder of this year, probably moving into next spring. And construction would be anticipated to start towards the end of 2019 or 2020. As, as uh, Dave noted, this is in the fiscal year uh, 2019 tip. So next steps, we'll review any comments that we receive from this at this meeting, incorporate and evaluate, incorporate as much as we can as part of that. We'll then advance the plans to the 75% and 100% design phases. So this is the first design phase of essentially four design phases, as there'll be a PS&E following that. And then, as was mentioned previously, the funding's available through the state TIP in fiscal year 2019. This information is on the um, handout. This is to mail in um, any, comment, any comments that occur after this hearing. And that is it for this. For this, I'm going to hand it back to Dave. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Greg. Uh, the plans tonight are not complete. As as Greg said, we're at a 25% design level, so the plans get submitted to us in the town at a 75% design level, where we review it, comment on it, and um, at that time it goes to a 100% level. Again, DOT reviews it. The town's going to review it. So we, we have a ways to go. Um, as Greg mentioned, I mean, there's still time to make changes. As Greg mentioned, I understand tonight that the town has a preferred option at the common, option two. And um, that'll be rolled into the 75% plans. Um, there'll be no need to backtrack on the design. It should be able to roll right into the next submittal. Um, the project's funded FY 2019, which means we have to advertise it. We have a one-year window in order to main capture that funding. That window starts October 1st of this year and ends September, the end of September next year. Um, this project is subject to federal highway review. Um, we have to advertise it, although the end of the fiscal year is the end of September next year, Federal Highway usually likes to have it in the paper uh, well before that, probably a month before it. So we should be advertising it before beginning of September next year. Um, the purpose of the meeting tonight is to get comments and get some input from the people that drive this corridor every day. Uh, I'm going to open it up to questions in a minute. Um, if you would like to have your comments uh, or questions entered into the official transcript, Please stand up at the second microphone. Identify yourself by name, aff affiliation, whether you're an abutter, local official, or concerned citizen, and spell your last name. This is necessary by law in order to obtain a full verbatim transcript. Also, I just want to remind you again, the last uh, sheet of the handout is a mail-in sheet. If you have any questions or comments, which you would like to submit in writing, please use this sheet for that purpose. You can leave the sheet with he me tonight, or if you want to um, mail it in within 10 days, it'll become part of the official transcript. I think there's a lot of handouts back there. If you want to take a few extras, give them to your neighbors. 
If you think of anything in the next few days, jot it down and send it in. Um, finally, it's normal procedure to ask elected officials to offer their comments first. And I have, um, I'd like to invite um, several uh, local officials and, and selectmen up to talk. Um, and I'd first like to start off with John Cotino, Board of Selectmen. Good evening, John Catino, <coughs> excuse me, um, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, one David Joseph Roden. <coughs> right, I'll raise it up a little bit. First, I'd like to express my uh, sincere appreciation to Mass DOT for their... Uh, okay, I'll eat the mic. I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to Mass DOT for their technical and, and soon to be financial support and their guidance. The town has been discussing the Main Street Corridor project for over 20 years. The current iteration uh, um, of the partnership with Mass DOT dates back to October 2009. In fact, the town records show that the town's 1957 master plan recommended improvements to the Main Street, including straighten straightening the Main Cedar Grove Street intersection. Based on a corridor design study by the Conway School of Landscape Design, the town appropriated $400,000 to commence the project in 2010. Throughout the planning and design process has been thorough, inclusive, collaborative, participatory, and adaptive. We have consulted and continue to engage with stakeholders, including the town boards and committees, residences, residents, businesses, and state entities. Over the years, the town has identified approximately $3 million to fund the undergrounding aspect of the project. In addition, the town received $500,000 from the Mass Works grant program for the purposes of finalizing the, product design, the project design, including undergrounding, the trails, the, uh, undergrounding and the trails. Through the community efforts and collaboration with our state partners, the Main Street Corridor Project is listed for TIP funding in 2019 for $8.2 million. Overall, the reconstruction of Main Street Corridor will improve safety, provide system preservation improvements, and is located in the town's downtown where private and public investments are occurring to promote job creation. The town has invested in the town hall, the new library, new police station, fire station, and is now looking at the reuse of the center school. Examples of private investments include uh, Old Town Liquors, Bill's Pizza, Middlesex Savings Bank, Pad, Pad Thai, Greg Mash's commercial in, in or the corner of Wall Street, of Wal Walcott and Main Street, 77 Main Street, Colella's Cross Point, Hopkinton Drug, and recently the town expanded the police station parking lot. A project of this ma magnitude has challenges and points of disagreement. I, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen and Town Manager, am looking forward to the continued discussion and likely resolution tonight and the upcoming months and refinement of the Main Street Corridor design towards the 100% design and eventual construction in 2019. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to ask Fran Young uh, from the Planning Board to come up. Hello, my name is Francis DeYoung, 12 Benson Road. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Planning Board here in town. I'd also like to express my thanks to the Mass DOT for the support of this project. The Planning Board adopted a master plan for the town in 2017. There's two provisions of the master plan's implementation plan related to the downtown corridor project. They are as follows. Item LU7, implementation, implement downtown Main Street corridor improvements, including roadway improvement, bike lanes, and beautification. Bury utility lines to facilitate sidewalks and parking improvements. Street tree planting and landscapes. Provide centralized stormwater collection infrastructure to allow for the building under current zoning requirements, which is presently limited by the need to provide for stormwater management on site. Item T3. <coughs> improve the Main Street <coughs> corridor to provide adequate parking, safe and efficient traffic flow, and bike lanes to facilitate downtown redevelopment and management of the growth traffic from areas of development. The Planning Board looks forward to the continued discussion. I know we've worked with Dave and the team on specific design elements as the project moves forward to the next phase. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Jane Moran. Upper, upper Charles Trail. 
Good evening. Um, Jane Moran, 70 East Main Street, that's M-O-R-A-N, and uh, Chair of the Upper Charles Trail. First of all, um, I'd like to start off by saying the Upper Charles Trail has been working with uh, DOT and town officials, um, Chamber of Commerce, and uh, some the town engineer for a couple of years now trying to get this right. And we're very excited. I, I think the unique piece that we have been able to accomplish so far is that two-lane, two-directional bike lane coming from the center trail down through Cedar Street. And we want to thank you for your cooperation in this. This was a unique design, and I understand it's one of the first to be considered in this area. And we are very grateful that you had that ability to be flexible for us. Um, and, uh, and our main goal is to improve bicycle safety and traffic circulation while advancing trail connectivity in our downtown to provide the health, economic, and social benefits that result from increased ridership. Our work so far has included public meetings, site visits, some in which have included the Mass DOT already and their, some of their staff, and presentations at the Board of Selectmen's meetings. The 25 design submission now includes a bike trail as we have ad advocated for. Since the submission of the 25% design, we are continuing to work with the town and other stakeholders to finalize the design elements of the bike lanes. For example, we are continuing to evaluate whether the bike lanes east of the main Grove Cedar Street intersection should be separated or not. And I would like to end by saying that we have every confidence in um, our town officials at all of our levels to continue to work out the final details of this very exciting project. We are very grateful to everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Elaine Lazarus, Director of Land Use and Town Operations. Elaine Lazarus, Director of Land Use and Town Operations for the Town of Hopkinton. Um, as many people have mentioned, uh, it's been a lot of planning over the years and uh, I've worked here long enough to participate in the development of four master plans for the town. And every one of them has talked about making some improvements to downtown before the project even had a name. So Fran talked about the 2017 plan. In the 2007 plan, the same concepts were discussed and recommended before it had a name. Um, and in all of our you know, planning collaborative efforts over the years, uh, one key thing has always come up, and that's the downtown. And the downtown is the key, the focus, the central part of the community. It's the civic heart of the community. And so I've been in many meetings over the years uh, for planning efforts, and whether it was a discussion of infrastructure, traffic, proposed zoning changes, anywhere in town, Legacy Farms, or the other downtowns that we see and we emulate, um, the impacts have changed, both positive and negative, um, on the downtown area. It's always been an important consideration over the years. So it always takes um, many years of planning to achieve a goal, and it's years of planning that's gone into this particular project. As it's mentioned, it goes back at least to 1957, where they talked about realigning the intersection. And it continues with today's plan, which supports the concept of the project. From a planning perspective, Hopkinton has changed much over the years, but it's also changed little. The downtown area is still relevant, and it's still the heart of the community. The traffic, the safety, and the design improvements in this area will help to make it a place that's safe for all people. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to ask John Westerling, DPW director, to come up. Good evening, my name is John Westerling. I'm your Director of Public Works, and I'm here to speak in favor of this project. First, I'd like to thank MassDOT for holding this public hearing and giving the community the opportunity to review the plans and provide additional feedback. But foremost, I'd like to thank all the residents, all the residents of Hopkinton, thank you, who have worked so diligently 
on this plan by providing input and feedback to help us to create a plan that will best serve this community <laughs> and that that work will be ongoing but I speak in support of this project for the the four primary reasons the first is improved safety for vehicles pedestrians and bicyclists that were summarized earlier by the engineer the second is for improved walkability for pedestrians we've spent more than a million and a half dollars in this community on new sidewalks in this project will con will construct a new continuous sidewalk on both sides of Main Street third it will provide improved traffic flow to help move vehicles safely through the corridor and fourth an improved pavement commission condition of Main Street the existing pavement is in very poor condition and needs some serious attention ideally either full depth construction or a thick mill and overlay and this project will accomplish all of the above as a as a personal note mass dot did a similar project in my hometown of holden some 20 years ago and i was an engineer for the project at the time and i have to say that the improvements to the aesthetics of the community the safety of the community uh, this this project will go a long way to bringing those same benefits to the town of hopkinton so thank you all and i look forward to continued development of this plan thank you john uh, next i'd like to ask joe bennett acting police chief to come up Good evening, I'm Lieutenant Joe Bennett and I'm here representing the Chief on behalf of the Hopkinton Police Department. It's B-E-N-N-E-T-T. -T. I know this project has began in 1957. I've only been participating with the Police Department since the early 90s on this project and we're very excited to see this come to fruition finally. I see a lot of faces around the room that have been working on it for decades and as a public safety agency, really all we can do is support any improvements that enhance the safety in and around that downtown area or anywhere where our, our motorists travel and our pedestrians and bicyclists travel. So we support it wholeheartedly. I'd like to thank everybody involved for keeping us participants over the decades and we were very pleased to be able to support the project with the addition of parking spaces in our, in our parking lot. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to invite Stephen Slayman, Fire Chief. Good evening. I'm Steve Slayman. I'm the Fire Chief and Emergency Management Director for Hopkinton. The last name is S as in Sam, L-A-M-A-N. Um, I think three main points that I've seen so far in this project are um, first and foremost for the last we rebuilt our fire station in the late 90s and we made a strong effort to try to get some traffic lights in front so we could uh, control traffic in front of the building when we um, um, enter and exit our premise uh, we weren't able to accomplish that within that project so every opportunity since then I've tried to work with any projects going on to see whether we could do that um, and in addition, it kind of helps with a main crosswalk that um, many of the seniors use that they go between the uh, police and fire department. And I also believe the police department will have some benefit of the ability to control traffic on Main Street in front of our two um, facilities. Secondly, just um, the movement in, um, of traffic, the congestion of traffic in the intersections for us to travel through town when we're doing emergency responses. Um, I just have a lot of confidence with some of the improvements we've had in the past at the West Wood Street and West Main. We put a set of lights in there and some of the improvements we did at Main Street before that with this project, it'll make it uh, safer for us to travel through any of the congestion and hopefully relieve the congestion um, when we respond throughout the town. And then finally, um, I think it's been commented already, but in general, I, I see a benefit to our pedestrians, our our bike users and just the uh, the traffic. Um, the we've had a dramatic drop in traffic accidents at some of the intersections that have been repaired. Um, 
the Cedar Street and uh, Main Street intersection is one that we still go to. Again, 10 accidents in a, as an average in a year, and that's significant for our downtown, and it really impacts the downtown when that happens. I, I just have confidence that this redesign is going to improve and um, the impact to uh, the safety of traffic in that area. So I thank uh, DOT for the work there, and especially thank everybody that's been working on the project within the town. So thanks. Thank you. And finally, uh, Scott Ricardo, Ricardo, uh, from the Chamber of Commerce. Richardson. Richardson. Sorry. I'm not going to speak Spanish. Somebody put, didn't put uh, the Scott Richardson, uh, President of the Chamber of Commerce, if that's who yeah. you want. Okay. Uh, R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S-O-N. Um, I've been uh, very uh, happy to <coughs> report that the Chamber has been working very closely with the town and with the engineers involved over the past, say, four years. Uh, we've hosted about five uh, sessions to review progress on the lay proposed layouts and have always been focused on safety and parking. Um, certainly, uh, it's, a, it's a conflict as you realign roadways make improvements for safety, make improvements for through traffic and parking. And some, a lot of times parking is one thing that suffers in any of these uh, downtown improvements. So we've been very vocal in stressing the fact that parking is critical. Uh, the engineers and DOT has heard our comments. Uh, we're, we've seen good progress in the addition of parking along the main corridor. Um, so we're, we're happy about that. Um, we really focus on the vast improvement that this will make to the appearance of downtown, the, aesthetic, the aesthetics of downtown, uh, and the safety for vehicles, pedestrians, and bicycles. So we're very supportive of the project. Uh, we know there's a few wrinkles relative to what's happening around the common. Um, we know that those can be resolved, and we're very supportive of seeing this project through, and we'll offer any support that we can to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are there any other uh, town or state or federal officials that would like to talk before I open it up? Okay, uh, the hearing is now open to the public. If anybody has any questions or comments, please come up to the mic and state uh, your name and spell your last name, please. My name is Mary Arnott. It's spelled A-R-N-A-U-T, and I live at 51 Teresa Road. I'm a resident, obviously, of Hopkinton. Um, I have three points that I would like to bring to everyone's attention. First, in particular, I'm concerned about a segment or segments of our population that I think this project will negatively impact. First, our senior citizens some of whom have to use walking aids. Um, it looks like now if this project goes through, when they cross the street, they will be crossing, let's see, two westbound lanes of traffic, an eastbound lane, bike lanes on either side. Um, and so that puts them at greater risk when they're crossing the street. It takes them a longer time. Um, they may not see or hear oncoming traffic or bikes. So I'm concerned about our senior citizens, and in fact, anyone who may have to use a walking aid. And I don't know if there's been involvement by a senior council or someone representing the seniors and their issues or people who need assistance or use some kind of walking aid to cross Main Street. So I'd like to bring that to your attention. I think it puts them all at greater risk. Um, secondly, also, when you take away parking spaces in front of the small businesses along Main Street that don't have parking lots, you're not only impacting our small businesses, but you're impacting, again, our population or segments of populations that need to have parking close to the business in order to be able to access it. And I see overall that there's attempts to make parking available. But in fact, we will have a reduction of parking, and we will have a reduction of parking in front of businesses that those segments of our population want to be able to continue to access, and it will hurt them to be able to do that. So again, I don't know if there's been any representation anywhere that really talks to the issues of people who uh, are seniors or have walking aids and issues with walking. So I hope you will go back and revisit this. 
Um, the other thing is I read in here under the pro proposed improvements that it says overhead utility relocations. Now in other meetings I've attended, this has been presented as putting utility wires underground. So I'm assuming that's still the case. And it was, this issue's been brought up at annual town meetings and the town voted it down. The majority of people said no, it would add, it's too expensive to do that. So in looking at the potential cost for this project, it seems to me that the fact that the majority of people were against that is not being taken in consideration. So I'd like to know if that would go back to town for voting again as part of the project cost. So in summary, I'd like you to address the issues of people who need to have parking close to the business, people who need to have extra time crossing the street, I think this again will put many people at greater risk who are pedestrians that walk. I know you're trying to address traffic that goes through the town east and west and the volumes and also being able to give people who ride bikes. But there are many people who walk. And I have seen many times myself and have also, also gotten hit, potentially, I mean, excuse me, almost gotten hit, trying to cross Main Street as it is now. Traffic is very impatient. Sometimes cyclists can't see you. And so I'm repeating myself, but to me it's an extremely important point that we're putting pedestrians at risk with this project. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to try to respond to the first and the last comment. Um, the project is, we're putting in new traffic signals and we're putting in a pedestrian crossing at the fire station. Um, when a pedestrian pushes the button um, they're given a certain amount of time to cross the street. The traffic has a red and especially near the senior center, we'll take a look to make sure that there is enough crossing, enough time on that red signal for somebody to get across the street that needs a little more time. Um, we, we have the ability to do that at this point in design. So that's something we'll look at. If I could add a comment to that, please, just yep. as well. Um, it's great to have pedestrian crossings where there's timings and they have to get across the street, but now we're talking about people who are trying to cross the street and then now have to walk down maybe multiple blocks to get to the business where now there's a parking right in front of the business so they can get out of their cars and go into it. As I understood it, we're losing parking spaces. We're not gaining any parking spaces. And the parking spaces are not necessarily convenient to where segments of the population that I was talking about are going. So it just seems to me that in all of these projects, we really need to keep in mind, I say our seniors, and I happen to be one of them now. I'm fortunate enough not to have to use a cane or a walker, but someday I may have to. And I know many of my friends already have to. So this is what I think is lacking in this entire project. Thank you. Okay. Um, the comment that you had about the underground utilities, right now the project is not proposing to put utilities underground. We have the utility poles that have to be moved out of the way to make room for a wider cross section, but um, as of right now we are not putting utilities underground. I understand that the town uh, still has a desire to, to do that, uh, to fund it. I don't believe funding has been identified yet. Um, and if that does happen at some point in the future, it'll have to, we'll have to be comfortable, DOT will be, have to com be comfortable that that can be designed and put into this project without jeopardizing the funding for the roadway. So as of right now, I'm not quite, quite sure, I know, I believe that you mentioned there's been some town vote on it and voted down and so forth. That's, um, you know, I'm not sure what the next step is and where the funding is going to come from. But as of right now, there is no funding that we know of and there's no underground utilities in this project. Hello, my name is Robert Falcioni. It's spelled F-A-L-C-I-O-N-E. I'm the editor of hopnews.com and I've followed this. I have an uh, office downtown too. And uh, I've had an office downtown for 25 years. Uh, it's relocated recently. But I've been following this uh, for most of these recent years, and uh, thank goodness it was 
that this project fell to someone other than myself. But I have a couple of things I'd like to point out. And uh, the, the, uh, the slide of the common showed the, the, um, uh, the alternate construction of that uh, grassy area that was shot down by the Historical Dis District Commission unanimously uh, the other night. So I don't think I heard the emphasis on that, but the town, as one person on that board said, the town has voted to keep it Marathon Way. And I think that's, myself personally, a great idea. Um, <clears throat> the uh, 8.2 million does not include the undergrounding, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, the, uh, another thing that I noticed at a previous meeting, and I made a big stink about it, is that um, you have removed the crosswalk by the respite center. Uh, that gentleman I spoke with took notes, and have you put that back in? That's very important for that crosswalk to go from the respite center to the parking area that they own. That it hasn't it <clears throat> that change hasn't been made as of yet. It will be incorporated as part of the seventy five okay, percent. I just I just feel it's a very uh, very important. And uh, I wonder about the scope. Uh, I I haven't had my hands on any studies, but the scope ends somewhere around country farms, uh, the subway. And uh, I'm just not sure why you don't bring it back to the post office, because before the, po the new post office, I well knew in quotes, was built, uh, there was a lane, a dirt shoulder there, that people uh, going north toward the downtown would use um, to queue up for the right turn. And uh, it would, I think, be very helpful in your traffic plan to uh, include that area. Um, currently, it would, when we designed the southbound, that southbound lane, it was switched from a designated right turn and a through left to a designated left turn and then a through right, with the intent being that the left turn lane could be designed to accommodate the queue necessary for, for left turning vehicles without impeding the through traffic. Well, that would be and good if there if, but what, and I'm sorry if, I, if you don't mind my uh, cutting in at this point, um, but this bottleneck at Country Farms. So until you remove that bottleneck and bring the scope of the uh, construction uh, more northerly, I don't know how, uh, how you're going to improve anything there, but I'll leave you with that. And I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Hi, my name's Jackie Potenzoni, 12 Wood Street. My last name's P-O-T-E-N-Z-O-N-E. -E. And I would think <coughs> since my name shows up on your ma map outside and I'm, I'm gonna butter to the plan, um, I just wanna say that I've been a very vocal opponent of the plan and I've won out quite a few pairs of sneakers walking up and down town on that roadway. And my concern is pedestrian safety, specifically how you're changing the lighting at Wood Street. Will that crosswalk still be at Wood Street and Main on, on the Main Street side? You're adding the crosswalk on Wood. And specifically Pleasant Street. I don't know if any, I'd like to sh find out a show of hands in this room. Have you tried to cross Pleasant Street at night, crossing the street with traffic coming from the center of town west. It's very, very difficult. There should be a lighted crosswalk at Pleasant Street as well, not just at the police station. More than once, my husband and I, people will stop, but the car's coming down, don't see the car stopped, and they wanna go around the car because they think they're turning onto Pleasant Street. It's a really difficult crosswalk. <coughs> and when my daughter, who graduated in 2010 was younger, we had a crossing guard there for school that has since been taken away because of school budget cuts. Um, so there has to be an issue addressed with that intersection, without a doubt. And my question is, what is the total number of parking after the plan? You mentioned there was 92 spots now, but you didn't say what the end result would be. Uh, it was 82 spaces, 82? and that was before the, um, and the, com the, the, the any changes to the common design. Um. And I, 
I have to say, I do like the idea that was scrapped with Marathon Way. Has any b decision been made to make that a one way or decommission that as a road? So the, the intent of that would be to make it one way one towards, way. A, towards Ash Street. All right. But I really, my concern is pedestrian safety. My son takes the Keefe Tech bus. He goes to Keefe Tech <coughs> for high school. And in the morning, especially, the cars don't even stop for the bus. He gets picked up in front of the center trail, right where Hopkinton Lumber is. And more than one occasion, people don't even stop for the bus in the morning. When it's, especially now that it's darker, it's hard to get across there. And Pleasant Street is a very difficult intersection. And I know there's been a lot of pushback about putting a lighted intersection, a lighted crosswalk there, a signal. And I don't understand why it would make it so much easier for pedestrians. And I brought this up at other meetings. And I just want uh, it, today at this public hearing that something should be addressed <coughs> at that intersection. Thank you. Um, sorry. just. Related to the signalization of Pleasant Street, uh, we can definitely relook re at it from a traffic. You know, I think from a traffic standpoint, we're, we've we've received comments regarding um, signalizing it from a traffic standpoint, and the issue with providing a signal there is that it there's so much through traffic that when, once you stop it. It, it cues back into the... Um, but I'm not talking about a stoplight. I'm talking about a pedestrian light right. to cross the crosswalk. And I understand they don't want to put a traffic light there, and I understand why. I'm talking pedestrian safety. This is why we're doing this plan. Yep. I, I'm concerned with the fact that you can't cross the street there. And we, and we can definitely reevaluate re that moving forward. Though. And I've so. crossed that street thousands of times. And it doesn't get any easier, and especially at night. And it gets dark early. It's early in the morning when the kids go to school, too. And the kids have to walk up that go <coughs> to all the schools. The kids that live downtown walk home from school, and they can't get across the street. We can look at a pedestrian signal there. Yeah, so that's what I'm can, referring to. I know you don't want to put a traffic light there, right. and I understand why. And I will say the intersection that you've changed and made the left-hand turn coming down from um, on, you know, Cedar Street in Grove, the, how you've made it, that you could take a left turn signal does make it easier to get across town there, but it's pedestrian safety. Thank and you. And a, a traffic, a pedestrian light, not a traffic light. Yep. Thank you. Hi, Ed Harrow, citizen, member of the CONCOM, if that's worth anything. The last name is spelled H-A-R-R-O-W. And I just have two issues that I want to address. The first really doesn't apply to you guys, but I've twice written letters because I, to the selectmen, or a copy to the selectmen, one in 2011 and one in 2017, because I did not understand how, quote, straightening this intersection was going to improve the traffic flow. And I really haven't gotten an answer to that, in my opinion. The second thing I want to talk about is bike, the bike issues. I'm a bikey. The biking in my family goes back to my multiple great aunt and uncles who have a picture of them on a tandem tricycle in New York Central Park in like the 1880s. My parents met riding bicycles in Gettysburg Battlefield Park. Um, to me, a bicycle is a vehicle. It deserves to be treated as a vehicle. It does not be, deserve to be treated as a pedestrian. The, the tandem two-way bike path makes me really nervous because you've got bikes going cheek to jaw with cars going the other way. What's separating them? I mean, um, you know, I've heard many different users on cyclists have many different opinions on, well, on and, that. And I will tell you, and up to five years ago, I thought bike paths were a totally bad idea. Yeah. I've, I'm, I've, I've, I've ameliorated my, my opinions on that a little bit. But I think in a traffic situation, I'm, I'm a lot less favorable to the idea, but I still want to know. You got a bike going this way, you got cars going this way, what's between them? Between don't the tell cars, me just two feet. Between the cars and, and the bike, there's a, the separate, it is grade separated, there's a small reveal, curb reveal, there's a two foot strip, and if you're talking about opposing bikes, I mean it's 10 foot and there's a stripe, 
similar no, to... No, no, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about opposing bikes. I'm yeah. talking about a bike you going westbound and a car going eastbound, and there's two feet of nothing in between it's, them. It's if something happens strip. to the guy in the bike that goes, it's a head-on crash. You, you know, I mean, there's, there's only so many things you could do if you had um, a barrier or something like that. Um, it, I, I think it doesn't well really warrant that. I've expressed um, that I think a bicycle is a vehicle. I think having this two-way bike path is a really bad idea. Having bike paths on the pavement, I, I don't feel so strongly about. But that I feel is a really bad idea. To tell a person they got to go down here, and then they got to take a left, then they got to ride the wrong way against the traffic in essence, then they got to go back across the traffic to continue on there, you're not going to catch me doing that. Lieutenant Bennett will be out there with a, a traffic ticket book writing to write me up because I'm not riding down the bike path. Thank you. Ken Weissmantle, 145 Ash Street. That's spelled W-E-I-S-M-A-N-T-E-L. I'm speaking as a former member of the planning board for 10 years. This project planning started in earnest about 11 years ago when the master plans for Legacy Farms, our big development on the east side of town, uh, started their engineering and their plans. I note for the DOT folks that the number of dwellings in Hopkinton is on track to increase by 28% in this decade. That's the need for this project. We've forecast it for almost the last 10 or 11 years, and I'm glad that it's finally getting uh, <coughs> through the approval process. I was asked to lead the town's pre presentation at the MPO uh, funding hearings on two occasions. I continue to support the latest version of the plan. I'd also like to thank Senator Spilka for her support of this project. The benefits to improve traffic flow and safety um, have been spoken a, a lot about tonight. I'd like to thank Crosspoint, the owners of the CVS property, for their cooperation in resolving the realignment of the intersection. To help answer Ed's previous question, when you realign the uh, intersection, you can take the time that you would have in separate things and add it to the east-west part. That will improve the efficiency through there. And you get a lot more cars through uh, at, the, at the same time. Uh, this realignment of the intersection is really key for the efficiency of traffic, the reduction of carbon emissions, and the reduction of backups on Main Street. There's two design items that I think you still need to look at in the next uh, design round. First of all is to make Church Street one way southbound. It is that way on Sunday mornings. The Church Street intersection, if you go northbound on Church Street and try to turn left onto uh, Main Street, that just doesn't really work unless somebody lets you in. Eliminating that northbound direction would allow tr uh, additional uh, parking on, on Church Street. This was identified by the planning board in a letter in 2014 and most recently with the site plan approval for the library expansion. And as the library gets more and more used, that intersection is going to be more and more of a problem. The second thing is I don't really like the way the, the bike path goes from a separated bike path, which I personally like. I think that would be a lot safer. I could see myself using that one. I don't like necessarily going out into the street. Uh, particularly, I, I see a lot of people using the uh, bike path in neighboring Milford, and when we connect all the way through that and be able to come to downtown with that, I think that's a great uh, feature for that. I think you got to look at to see whether you can squeeze those extra couple of feet, whether we got to require some right-of-way or, or maybe lose another parking spot or two. Uh, you, you've got you've got to try to make that continuous al along that way because I don't think people will go for a block or two off of the other side. I just don't think that'll work too much. Next thing is not to um, the Department of Transportation, but for our town officials. I ask you to focus on acquiring land and building off street parking. Downtown needs in the central part when I'm talking about right around the library, town hall, we need off-street parking. 
This is particularly important because the parking spots that are being lost, and I understand that we have a lot of parking spots that the length of them you can't even fit a car in without over, because they're not standard, and, and I understand why we're losing spots from a visibility and safety standpoint, but we are losing some spots. Also, the construction will cause uh, a lot of spots to be lost during the construction period. The town officials need to make it a priority to get this off-street parking, which is sorely needed, done before we start the construction in earnest. And we're now getting on to a very short timeline. Um, when finished, I believe this project will be very positive for the town of Hopkinton, the downtown businesses, and the commuters on routes 85 and 135. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll, we'll take a look at George Street um, southbound. Separating, having to separate a bike path through the downtown is something that I have a feeling is going to uh, be disruptive as far as right away and require more property takings. Um, so that's something that um, would be a significant change, but it would be up to the, the town if they wanted to investigate that further. Hi, Brian Hurt, 31 Elizabeth Road here in Hopkinton. My uh, last name is Hurt, H-E-R-R. I'm a uh, three-term selectman, third year of my third term. Hint, hint, everybody. Uh, most of the brain trust of Hopkinton is here tonight. And uh, as you look around the room, and as, as I look around the room, I say most of the brain trust is here. Not everybody's here, but a lot of the folks that work very hard to make Hopkinton a great community are here. Uh, we care deeply about uh, our community and what we're doing to move it forward. This would be a great project as well to make that happen. Uh, I think there's been some really good feedback so far tonight, and I'm sure more is coming at us uh, here in the next few minutes, uh, and ideas that I hope we can incorporate somehow into the plans. One of the topics that's come up a couple of times, which brought me to the microphone, is the question about what's going on with Marathon Way. So the plan we saw tonight, the 25% plan that was submitted, showed it as grassed over. The Historic District Commission voted recently, I believe last week or earlier this week, last week I guess it was, uh, unanimously to recommend that it be a one-way going eastbound towards Ash Street with parallel parking on the right-hand side of Marathon Way. The Board of Selectmen will take that vote under consideration and we will then vote to submit that to the DOT and th through the proper channels uh, at some point in the very near future. I can't speak on how the vo board's going to vote, but I do know that we'll take that up in our, one of our meetings very soon. So we'll get to it, and I think you'll likely see something else coming from the c community officially. But uh, just because it's on their plan tonight, folks, that does not mean that's going to be what gets submitted formally here very soon. Uh, finally, and I forgot to mention one person being part of the Brain Trust, Representative Dykema is here with us this evening, and I want to thank her for coming out as well tonight. Uh, she's been very supportive of Hopkinton and this project all along. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of work yet to, to be done. Uh, we look forward to uh, working with everybody in town and taking all this feedba feedback, not only to the DOT, but to ourselves, and we'll, uh, we'll be back, back to you all very shortly, perhaps with a new, slightly different version for Marathon Way. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Greg Mazur, spelled M-A-Z-U-R. I'm here with my wife, Kathy. Uh, we own property at 3036 Main Street, so Main Street in Walcott, and 42 Main Street, and also on Walcott, uh, 5 Walcott Street, which is where my wife's business is. Um, first, uh, we'd like to say that we have a lot of praise for everybody in this room, all the town officials and, and uh, selectmen and uh, everybody's worked very hard on this project for a long time. We moved here in 1996, and we were hearing about the 1957 project then. Um, we undertook, uh, four years ago now, uh, a large project, especially for us. We're not developers, uh, but we put up, you know, uh, renovated, and now we have, uh, I think, 16,000 square feet of retail and mixed use with uh, four uh, residential tenants. Um, this project, I think, is uh, is going to be fantastic, and, and, and there's a great need for it. I'm going to reiterate uh, what Ken has said, um, that we, we in this town, I think, um, are under, underestimating the whole idea of building a bridge to nowhere. Because if you want a strong, economic, and viable downtown, 
that businesses can thrive, you must have parking. You can't take six over at the police station. You can't take 40 at St. John's, and they cannot um, basically replicate what is next to a, a Hopkinton Gourmet. Um, uh, he's not here today. He had to chen, attend a uh, church outing, but um, uh, he's uh, he being Dave, who owns Hopkins and Gourmet. It's a small coffee shop. It's very popular in town. Um, he pretty much has resigned to the fact that he'll probably close his business in the next two years. And uh, I don't like to see that anybody. I'm a I'm a businessman, and we spent a considerable amount in the downtown because we we believe in this town. Um, we've been here for 22 years. We love the town. It's great. But uh, it's a word of caution that if this project is started and everything goes through as planned, um, even with the parking places we have today, uh, the ones that are, you know, we know that are not official and they're not legal, they work. We're a small town. Um, but with those going away, um, I, I really fear that you're going to have a downtown that. <clears throat> has basically said to Lumber Street, which is fine, um, you know, you guys will be more of the economic engine of the town because downtown, what we probably have to, we've been trying to get a restaurant in our space for two years. <clears throat> for two years, I've talked to 60 restaurants. The number one, number one objection is, where's the parking? And so to have a dynamic downtown with economic and social benefits to ride those bicycles downtown I don't know what they're going to come downtown for. Maybe go to the library, maybe go to the green space, but they won't be going to get a yogurt, a pizza, coffee, coffee whatever it is. And so I think that's, that's really essential. And I know that everybody has tried, and I know that this is a huge project. But if I were just one vote, I would say, you know what, um, instead of spending $6.5 million on putting the cables underground, um, buy some private land and put up a public parking place. If I had to have my druthers, I'd love the idea of it going underground, but I just believe that the need for the parking is the economic engine of our downtown. So thank you. Thank you. I'm Claire Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, 28 Hayden Row Street. I'm also vice chair of the Board of Selectmen and an almost 40 year resident of the downtown. And um, I've seen all the changes in the downtown. It's an area that we very much uh, value and treasure. Um, I'm very grateful to the DOT for moving this project forward and funding it. And I'm also particularly grateful for um, their willingness to work with the citizens of the town to listen to our input. Um, Historically, the way we have a as a town have done business is cooperation, collaboration, um, working together, and I, I thank the DOT for working with us in the same way. Um, so I only have a couple comments on a few uh, aspects of the plan. I think one would really be considered a, a tweak um, in looking at the end of Hayden Row going into Marathon Way, um, there is a, a large sort of bump out bulb to direct traffic into um, Marathon Way. And uh, while I understand the need for sidewalk, I also know that we don't want to put impervious surface where it isn't needed. So I would suggest um, on that bump out, there is a sidewalk that circles the entire bulb, which looks to me to be a sidewalk to nowhere. Um, no one is going to bike or walk around the outside of the bulb. If they if they cross the, si the uh, crosswalk there at Hayden Row, and go along the common, they will walk straight across along the sidewalk that runs along the common. They're not, they're not going to go up and around the outside of the bulb. So um, I, I would recommend that that bulb be grassed in and there just be one direct sidewalk and, uh, and eliminate that unnecessary um, impervious. Uh, on a personal note more, as, as a local resident, um, I would ask the engineers to just take another look at um, 
the effect of the narrowing of Main Street at Hayden Row on the traffic coming out of Hayden, Hayden Row and trying to enter the main flow of traffic, particularly westbound. Um, I know the objective of this project is largely improving the east-west flow of traffic, but uh, you know, as is exhibited in the Pleasant Street intersection as well, we've got an entire south side of town that has difficulty, except for going through the stoplight intersection at, uh, at Grove Street, um, the entire south side of town, if you want to come up to 135, head west towards 495 or the Mass Pike or the western um, <coughs> section, it is very difficult to get into that flow of traffic. Um, right now, the relative width of Hayden Row allows a motorist to, at a very busy time when no one will give you a break, to make a left and create somewhat of a merge to get into the flow of traffic. And sometimes, and it's getting earlier and earlier, like 3 o'clock, 2.30, that's the only way you can get out of Hayden Row and into the flow of traffic. So um, perhaps a second look at the, at the turning movements at that intersection, whether there is a way that there's enough width still allowed while narrowing it for safety, but enough still allowed that you don't have you know, essentially the entire southern part of the town sort of trapped and unable to get into that western, that western flow. Um, it's the same thing at Pleasant Street, but I understand the, the limitations of Pleasant Street. Um, and I would echo Mrs. Potenzone's concern about um, the need for some crossing assistance at, at Pleasant Street. Um, finally, I just want to mention um, with respect to Church Street, um, I believe what happens further up Church Street is outside the scope of the DOT. Um, I would expect that any changes to Church Street be something that we address as a town. Um, there is a lot more to Church Street than simply the library. Church Street and accesses a number of residential streets with many, many private residences and many, many children. It's a very vibrant residential neighborhood. And um, so if we make any changes, this should be addressed, bringing the residents of those neighborhoods into the discussion. This is outside of the DOT project. And um, there are children on those streets constantly and um, we need to look at the overall impact and the quality of life for our downtown residents when we make any such changes. So I would ask that that certainly not be a part of this project. I, I don't think it, it rightly is. Um, and thank you again for all your good work and working with the town. Thank you. Pam Waxlax, 15 Smith Road, WAX, LAX. I have two questions. The first one, we talked about the bike lanes, the separation. Is there a grade change in the bike lanes from the regular street? Yeah, it's a, I think it's a two inch, four inch uh, grade separation. How will that be addressed during snow events in terms of plowing? Will it make it much more difficult for the town? I mean, I, it's something the town is going to have to address finally we have talked about that and it's my understanding that the town is going to try to remove snow from the bike lane um, during events and the sidewalk thank you the other question I had was John did you want you want to <laughs> That's an excellent question, one that we've looked at with our sidewalk machines. Uh, we have snow blowers on those sidewalk machines. We also have plows on those machines. The town also invested in a loader mounted snow blower. So we believe that we can take all the snow off of the sidewalks and the bike paths, put it into a windrow in Main Street, and then load the dump trucks and remove it from there. Thank you. The other question I had was in regards to um, 
the additional lanes that are going to be in 135 West at Cedar and Grove in terms of making it instead of the current one lane going west having two lanes which appears to end halfway through the gas station the sunoco wouldn't that just create an accordion <coughs> effect where you where you are allowing a lot more in but it still has to go back down to one so quickly there is i mean <clears throat> we f we feel like we have carried it um that's a it's a relatively short uh, section of Two lane on both the west on the uh, east side. Um, so we've carried it at, at, to meet design standards for merging on the far side. Um, you know, we were also we could carry it further. That would also jeopardize additional parking. <laughs> right. So there, again, this is a balance. Um, the key. <coughs> I think the key for the traffic was to try and get as much through the signal and generally as people accelerate there's gaps are made between those two and, and the merge becomes easier it's not it's not ideal I mean it, it, would, it would be great if we could make it significantly longer and you would help significantly longer but due to the geometric constraints of the properties at the back of sidewalk and parking this was the best that we could, that we felt we could uh, do and accomplish and accomplish what we were accomplish what we were trying to get out of it. So the so in terms of making it into the three lanes, what was the accomplishment? I know one is the dedicated left turn lane. Why not just keep so the far right a dedicated right turn lane to keep traffic from so slowing the, 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 down? the two um, going back to traffic, and I know. Um, I think Mr. Harrow had the had the comment about it. The the two through lanes reduces the the expected queue in that direction, the vehicle queue from about anywhere from 1,500 feet to 2,000 feet, depending on the time of the day, down to about 400 feet. So that's what those that's what those two lanes, two through lanes, help to accomplish. It's <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's. It is what it is. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, 400 feet is a, is a typical, a typical first signal of that of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. So that's not something that that should clear every time, which it obviously does not now. Um, yeah, I've been in it plenty of times <laughs> <laughs> living in the living in a surrounding community. here. So I, you know, I have gone through that intersection numerous times and this was <coughs> you know, we felt this was one of the best ways to accomplish improve the signal timings improve the signal operations without major impacts to the surrounding businesses okay. thank you yep. Dale Danahy 25 East Main Street D-A-N-A-H-Y um, I lived in this town in 1957, and I think I'm the only person in this room that ha was here in 1957. Um, and it's kind of ironic because my father purchased um, the corner of where CVS is today in 1955 from the town of Hopkinton. So it's kind of funny that two years later the town of Hopkinton decides that's when they want to do um, the offset intersection and fix it. They owned it. So if they wanted to do it, they should have fixed it then. Um, so I, I kind of find that study hard to believe that um, that's what was planned, but I just want to set the record straight there. Um, I worked at that intersection for 45 years and nine months, quite a bit of my life. Um, I live downtown, um, pretty close to where this is all starting. Um, as a retailer, one thing I learned, the most important thing is convenience for your customers. You have to have enough parking, you have to be convenient for people to get in and out of your shop quickly, and easily. And parking, we were very um, lucky to have 129 parking spaces. We had the majority of parking downtown when we were in business for 70 years. So I, I agree wholeheartedly with the gentleman who is trying to rent his, um, his space for a restaurant for two years. You can't do it if you don't have parking. So I feel sorry for these businesses that um, are not gonna have parking in front of them. FIPS Insurance. Um, 
the um, Yoga Beach. Uh, there's there's five of them. Um, the barber, it, correct. I'm not gonna, it, as a person going to the library, I hate to tell you, but those 40 parking spaces in St. John's, I'm not gonna park there and walk to the library. I'm lazy, and I'm in good shape. Um, so I, those parking spaces that have been replicated aren't gonna help anybody. I don't think anybody can safely cross Main <coughs> Street, even with the way you've got it planned, because you're crossing four lanes to get to the barbershop from the police station. So thank you for trying, but I don't think you succeeded. Um, that's my first comment. So I agree wholeheartedly you know, with some of the other comments that um, my son is in a wheelchair. Um, so for, we live um, close enough to Main Street so he can get up the sidewalks. But if, if the weather's lousy like it's been, he's got to drive. And he's not going to be able to get to these businesses and park at St. John's and try to get a coffee at, at the Hopkins and Gourmet. It, it doesn't work. So his other concern was the different levels of the sidewalk with the um, bike path. I would love to see at one level, number one, I'd like to see an analysis of how much more it's gonna cost us to do snow removal. Um, I've seen the, the snow removed hundreds of times in the middle of the night when you've got one plow that starts on one side, they line up side by side by side, they push it from the sidewalk and just take one big swipe I'm not sure you're gonna be able to do that quite so easy with this level here, this level there, and that level there. So I'd like to know how much more we're gonna pay for snow removal. This is New England, it's gonna snow, it has snowed. Do we have any, any analysis on how much more we're gonna pay because we have all these levels? Yes, no, maybe, no? We haven't done that yet. Okay. Is it possible to make them all one level? You've got a crowd of people, you go into poly arts, you, whatever's going on downtown, you've got people on bicycles, you've got pedestrians, people in strollers, a kid in a wheelchair, he's gonna get knocked off. Where's he gonna wind up? Out in the street, out, out in the traffic. Is it possible to do it one level? I don't think we would approve one level for vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians. Okay, you, we just, I've, I, I live on 135, I go towards Framingham. Framingham from the Ashland line to the Natick line has just done their bike lane. It's painted, it's a nice, lovely painted lane. Why can't we do that? It just was finished. Why can't we do the same thing? A lot cheaper, a lot safer, I don't, do they have pedestrians at the same level as they, well? No, they've got, a, um, they've got sidewalks, a okay. curb and sidewalks, and a painted lane for bikes. So you're It works. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I think that is uh, one option in the standards. Um, there's several different options on how you can do it, and I, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, that is one option. I don't know if you can have a two-foot separation from, from travel way to bike and have it level. It might have to be a little more than that. I'm not sure, but that you, you can design it and have it level. It's simple, it's cheaper. Uh, I don't know how, I mean, if, it, if you do need a wider than a two foot strip, you might be taking more private property to do that. I don't it's, know. It's actually in the, well, it's not in the roadway, but the, it's, yeah, actually it is in the roadway. Okay, yeah, take a, take a ride down there. I, it's just been finished. They just did all their road work. They've put in sidewalks, granite curbs, and they've got a bike path that works. You, you share it with the cars, but it's off far enough in so that you're not in the roadway. Like I believe the bike, isn't the bike in the roadway at the Wood Street intersection? Coming up to it, yes. Yes, yes. It's in the roadway, right? And, and this at least is you know, separated somewhat from where the cars travel. I think it's worth looking at. Thank you. Here's a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a one that's, that's a one way. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have one way and part of ours. Right. No, that's definitely that's definitely something that would be feasible. Yeah, I was involved okay. in that project. Tom Dings, the spelling is D-I-N-G-S, uh, resident of Hopkinton, three-wordy circle. Uh, I'm an avid cyclist. I bike to work um, a lot of days, not now. It's too cold and it's too dangerous for me. Uh, but uh, I, I travel with the cars. There are very few places I have a bike lane that I could travel on uh, in the direction I go. 
And I, I, I understand this bike lane is going to be great for most, you know, 12-year-olds or whatever. I mean, I, 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 we get them out of the traffic pattern. I get that. Um, I think there are a couple of points that make this unsafe for, I mean, just for example, if I'm going north out of the center of town, Cedar Street, 85 North, I'll hit 40 miles an hour easily down that hill. Now, there, I mean, up the hill, I'm, I'm you know, well, when it's traffic, I'm faster than cars. I'll pass a few, they'll pass me, I'll pass a few, I'll eventually get there. But Joe, what's the speed limit there? T 10 miles, <laughs> 30, <laughs> I'll, I'll go. Uh, whatever speed I can, I'll, I'll make myself like a car when I need to. If I'm turning left, I'll take the left lane, center of the left lane, so cars wait for me to take a left at a stoplight. Um, but but when, I'm, when I'm slow, 10 miles an hour up a hill, I'm over on the side as far as I can so everybody can pass me. We'll go three wide on Saddle Hill if that's what cars want to do. But I'm just saying that, that some of these things are dangerous. Bike lanes, um, when they're painted, are slippery. I'm not always out there on a bright sunny day. Um, if it's wet, I will be off that thing. I, I, crosswalks are a problem um, I, for cornering and so forth. I, I will be, I will take my option to become a car if the bike lane's painted solid green or whatever it is. I, maybe that's just an, a depiction on your slides. Um, but if it's painted, that's, that's slippery. Um, if it's unclear rights of way, such as, I mean, I, I'll avoid sidewalks. Think of sidewalks. A, a little kid could bicycle on the sidewalk, sure, but they need to stop at a driveway when a car is backing out of their uh, driveway. I'm on the road. I don't stop for cars backing out of the driveway. I'll be yelling, you know, on your left and so forth. And, and uh, I, I've had some close calls with cars. I take Saddle Hill and Fruit Street and uh, just they don't see me. I'm invisible as a bike. I've got as much lights as I can, but so anyway, unclear rights of way are, are dangerous and, and would discourage use of the bike lane. Sharp turns are dangerous. If I'm going 30 miles an hour, I, I'm not going to be making sharp turns. I want to be going straight with the cars. Um, so I just want to, I mean, and obviously the bike lane's not required for bikes. Just because there's a bike lane there doesn't mean I need to travel in it. So I just want to point out that we're not covering all of the bikes. If that's not the intent, that's fine. Um, but it, we're, if we're spending a lot of money and we think we're covering all the bikes, we, we're, we're not. So thank you and appreciate all the work that's been done here. I think this is good overall. Thank you. Uh, Scott Richardson, President of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I've heard a couple things about the bike paths and uh, I wanted to also chime in. Um, certainly, I concur with the fact that the tandem bike path is not as preferred as separated bike paths on each side. Um, and then queuing up with uh, Dale's comment about having the bike lane, if possible, again, we were under the impression it wasn't possible, but if possible at the same grade as the road, could that be looked at to then solve the problem of having bike lanes on both sides of Main Street to full length at, uh, at the road elevation? Um, obviously something you can't answer right now, but uh, certainly if, if that can be done, um, that would be something I think that might solve a few, few issues. Um, the other thing is about parking. Uh, there seems to be a misconception about parking in front of Phipps Insurance. There's still actually quite a few spaces in front of Phipps Insurance. I think you might have lost one, if that. And there is still a couple spaces in front of Yogurt Beach. Obviously not enough. Um, and again, that's something the Chamber has been pushing all along. Uh, so again, as you're looking at the plan, as you're looking at these bike lanes, anything you can do to add back any parking all along Main Street would be appreciated. Thank you. The, um, I think the bike lane, um, at one time, it was two separate one way on, on both sides. And it was flush with the road. Um, and as the design evolved, um, the town brought forward this design that has the separated bike. That was the preferred. Dorothy Farrador Wallace, 57 Pinecrest Village, W A L L A C E. I'm chair of the Hopkinton Marathon Committee, and I'm glad to see what was voted last week by the Historic District Commission, the alternate plan two. My question is, is that then gonna be altered going forward? Um, 
to incorporate maybe what people are talking about this evening. And, but as far as Marathon Way being a one way, going eastbound, the Wythe Road, yeah. those, those are the things that affect us setting up staging and everything for the Boston yeah. Marathon annually. I think, um, you know, for, for Marathon Way, from what I understand, the selectmen will vote and then there'll be a letter and a plan coming into MassDOT with the new alternative, if that's what the town is looking to do. Okay. And we'll roll it into the design. Oh, okay. um, the comments tonight, and you know, we've heard a lot about the parking and, and the pedestrians, the crossings. I mean, we, we make the verbatim transcript and then we go through it you know, with the consultant and with the town and we try to address as many of these issues as we can. Okay. And that'll so be uh, rolled into the next. Uh, the board of selectmen will be making decision. Is it your anticipation that that would change from the blueprint we saw? Oh, it will. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just getting a thought. Oh. oh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joe Markey. I live at uh, 39 Ash Street in Hopkinton. <coughs> I'm uh, speaking as a resident um, who uh, passes through to downtown, I'm a M-A-R-K-E-Y. Uh, I pass through the downtown on my way to work in the morning and on the way back in the evening. So uh, this evening I got stuck on, uh, on, on Main Street at Wood behind somebody who was turning left and I had to wait a whole traffic signal. So I'm glad to hear that left turn lane onto Wood is part of the plan. Um, uh, I liked everything I've seen here. Uh, I guess I should say um, I served on the planning board from 2006 to 11. I think it was right after Brian Herr was on. Brian moved on to Selectman. He was a great advocate on the Selectman for this project. Ken Wisemantle, who spoke, uh, also uh, this, had, this had been a big focus at that time. From 2009 to 10, I served on the Downtown Revitalization Committee as the planning board rep and it was instrumental in getting the Conway School in, which ultimately resulted in that Visions for Downtown Hopkinton report. That's, and, and having been intimately part of that report and now reviewing the plans here, I recognize the visions that we had collectively as a community back then represented in this plan. So um, I speak in favor of, of these changes. I have concerns that same as Jackie Potent Zone at the Pleasant Street for pedestrians. Um, I'm not clear what, uh, I, I guess um, as far as bike lane, my preference to see, and maybe it's because I have young kids and I see the number of middle school kids that go down there on early release to Yogurt Beach and Hopkins and Gourmet and the Common and everywhere, uh, I, I guess my preference would be for separated bike lanes, whether it's one or two, I don't care, but uh, separated from the roadway as much as possible. And I didn't know what that red strip in one of the images meant but I'm hoping it could be a grass strip with curbs on both sides in between wherever the bike lane is and the roadway. That's my opinion. Uh, again, I want to thank all my fellow residents, volunteers over the years who worked together to get to where we are, as well as uh, uh, State Senator uh, Spilka, as well as Carolyn Dykem, our state rep, uh, a former planning board member herself who understands the trade-offs that we're struggling with very well and also lives in a community <clears throat> that appears to have benefited from a downtown improvement project like this already. So uh, again, thanks for all the hard work and I stand advocating that we, we take this plan and, and make it better if we need to, but let's, let's move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have any more questions or comments? No? Okay, um, I just want to remind you again, um, take a handout with you, and if you do have anything, you think of something after you leave tonight, jot it down and send it into the department, and we'll make it part of the transcript, and um, we'll review it. Um, you can leave it with me tonight, the sheet, the comment sheet, or send it to the department within 10 days uh, for it to become part of the official record. Um, before I close the hearing, I just want to say we'll be around afterwards. If you want to have specific comments, if you have any specific comments about your property, um, 
There's plans in the back. We can talk to you personally. Um, thank you for attending the hearing tonight and providing us with this auditorium. And I'd like to declare the hearing closed at 8.50. Thank you.